we're going to talk today about some techniques for netting bees. The goals for why we're doing it, collecting bees, what we're going to collect, how to get them in the jar, how to label it, all that type of stuff. So I think the first thing is to just talk about why we're netting and the goals of netting. So for our bee monitoring project, our big goal is to really capture the biodiversity as much as we can of bees across the state. And so that means when we're going out netting, our goal isn't to catch everything that we see, but it's to capture the most diversity that we can find. Because in ecology, there's almost always the case that there are a few species that are very common and then a bunch of other species that are more rare. So our goal isn't to just catch a whole bunch of the really common thing, but to use our, you know, hone our skills and find the one sort of rare or, or unusual thing. So before I start collecting, what I tend to do is to mark the time. Um, I don't have a device to tell the time in front of me, but I have my normal collecting labels and I would write the time that I started netting on it before I start. And then we can come back to this and write the stop time when you're done and then fill out the rest of the label. And if, if you know your plants, it's not a bad idea to kind of make a note of what plants you're looking at. This is a type of goldenrod, so solidago. Um, often it's not as important to get the species, but if you know, for example, a common name or the genus, so this, this, there's lots of species of solidago, but so on, on my label, we'll write uh, solidago for here because that's one of the common plants. Um, so let's get on to just netting, the techniques for netting. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and depend on who you talk to, they would give you different advice. But in general, one way to think about it is to focus on the flowers and wait till things land on flowers and then move quickly, kind of bashing through the flower to collect them. So we have a number of things here. So far, I'm not seeing um, any bees at the moment. So let's move down a little bit. There's a wasp. Don't really want to catch a wasp. Um, so there, see that's, I can't tell if that's a bureau. I think it might be a Hylaeus and now it's gone. The things that are interesting are often pretty fast. So let's see. I could catch a bunch of mosquitoes if I wanted. There's a honeybee. That's kind of boring. Uh, I remember someone asked me if we should collect honeybees and I was like, I don't know, maybe collect one, but I don't know that it really serves the purposes of our project much to collect honeybees. Mostly flies I'm seeing right now. That's a fly. Where's a bee when you want it? So also one thing about bees is their activity changes throughout the year, but also throughout the day. So depending on changes in temperature and humidity, the bee activity can change quite radically. Even just since we've been here, when we first got here, I saw a number of bees and now I don't see any. That's a wasp. And so normally when this happens, um, I will kind of, oh, there's a bumblebee. Okay, so this bumblebee is on that flower. So I'm just gonna bash through the flower and then ho hopefully you saw that. that that's a, the, the essential little trick there is, so I have, now there's a bumblebee in this net. When I'm doing this, it's not gonna get out, but when I stop, it could fly out. So as soon as you stop, you do this flip. And once you flip that over, they tend to be trapped and they can't get out. Using that technique, often what happens is I'll end up with parts of flowers in there because I kind of bashed it through the flower. So one way, for a lot of bees, they're only gonna crawl up on the net. And so one thing I often do is hold the net up like this and they're only gonna fly up and then I can basically like get those hunks of flowers and fall out. And that bee crawled up to the top of the net just as predicted. And so when you're like this, uh, some bees will fly and get out. So you have to be careful, but a lot of them will do this. They'll only crawl up. So <coughs> I, swallowed a, <laughs> I swallowed a mosquito. Okay, so we've got a honeybee in, or a bumblebee in there. So how do we then get this into our jar? I'm gonna do the little flip here so it's not gonna get out. So there again, I flipped it over. So it, it, um, she's in there. What I have here is a jar just with soapy water, just a little little drop of soap and then water. Um, and we wanna get our, um, hey, bubble. Uh, we wanna get 
our bees into here. The uh, soap means that they'll drown quickly, so they're not going to be sort of sitting on the surface of the water. So this can be a tricky part of getting from the net into your jar. And there's two, I'm going to mention two main ways of doing that. One is taking advantage of the fact that they always crawl up. And what we can do, so I'm going to get, is I often just kind of set my net on the ground and hold the net up like this. And now our bumblebee is up at the top of the net. It can sometimes be hard to see in your net if the sun is shining on it. So I often put my back to the sun and so I'm casting a shadow on the net and it can make it a little easier to see in. Now that bee's not gonna fly down and out. So what I can do is just lift my jar up there and then get it right under the bee. Bumblebees tend to cling to the net really well. So I often end up having the bumblebees now on a net, then she just fell in. So often I'll kind of have to tap to get them to fall into the water. But that that's the that's one main technique is to basically just hold your net up like this and then reach up and then um, get them to fall off the net and use gravity to fall into your jar. You can even do this if there's multiple bees in your net because they'll you can kind of just go in and get each one of them and they'll all be kind of crawling to the top because I don't know, that's just what insects do. That if they don't know what's up, they tend to crawl up. So let me catch another bee and I'll show you a slightly different technique that maybe feels a little more safe, like they're not gonna get out. So I wanna show a technique of get, uh, an alternate technique for getting bees out of the net. And in this case, I've actually caught a few already. There's um, bumblebee, honeybee, and a couple sweat bees, and I think maybe some flies in there. So they're all kind of in there and I've done the flip and I'll show the flip again. You can, uh, it's, yeah, it looks easy, but it does, it's just like a little wrist flick and you get it to flip over, then you're kind of safe, they're not going to get out. So before using this next technique, um, you want to give it a good hard back and forth so that you're going to push any bees down to the bottom of the net and then quickly grab it like this so that all of your bees are now at the bottom here. Then once you have it like this, uh, get your jar. Take the lid off. It's kind of it's one of those things you felt like you wish you had an extra set of hands, but sort of figure out the methods here. Often I'll kind of use the ground to hold stuff up, but in this case, I think I got it. So I'm holding it like this, all the bees are now in this bottom part. And I just kind of thread my jar up there and holding it. And this sometimes can feel more comfortable because you feel like, well, nothing's going to get out. I'm holding it tight. And now things are flying around. Sometimes they'll just fly into the water and then you have them. Other times you kind of keep inching your way up until you have them kind of trapped between um, the jar and the net. And then kind of you can tap them to get them down. And it's kind of sad because they're struggling for their life. But, you know, we remind ourselves we are we're doing an, a, uh, an honorable collection here. We're collecting them for good reason. And uh, we're always going to make sure that we label and process and pin everything correctly so that their lost life is for a good reason. Uh, so if you're feeling bad about killing bees, uh, hopefully you can think about that as long as you make sure to do everything properly, follow all the protocols, that this was for a good reason. So that worked pretty well. I had three or four bees in there and I managed to get them all out. Um, by using this kind of uh, in their technique. So a few of the, that really doesn't work if you don't first do the step where you get them all at the bottom and then get them all at the bottom and then quickly flip it and grab so that they're all in that one spot and then reach up and, and get them in like that. So that is kind of the second alternative to the just kind of holding it up and then getting them out. They're similar. Um, in both cases, you kind of want to hold them up so they're going up to the top of the net. So I know a lot of people kind of have difficulty just actually getting bees in their net. So I can just kind of show some other tips. Um, you know, we're norm normally using these shorter nets um, and there's a few different approaches. I mentioned before, see actually that's a pretty cool looking bee right there. This is different. I think that's a Melisodes. And it's right in the middle of this cluster of flowers which makes it hard to net. Cause if I bash through, I'm not sure I would get it. So one thing you can do is kind of inch close 
and then nice see I got her so in that technique the one of the things I use is that bees are pretty focused on movement so if you move closely and kind of come down from below them they tend to not notice of course there's no no universals but you can often get kind of close and then do a quick flip up through kind of through the flowers up through them um, and a lot of times, you know, I would say most of the time I'm catching things, it's when they're sitting on the flower and then you're still passing the net. So the middle of your net is where the bee is. So that means you're kind of bashing through the stems and the vegetation and stuff. And that's just, you know, it just seems to be the most reliable way most of the time. Sometimes you can just wave above the flowers, but I would find that's always a little more iffy if you're going to catch anything. So um, this, again, I got some pieces of those flowers, which can make it hard to get it out. So I'm going to do this technique where I just hold it up like this. And the bee will almost always be crawling or flying up to the top of the net. And you can kind of shake out the flower parts, although it's not working right now. There we go. The flower fell out and our bee... So if I flip that net over, she's probably going to get out. Uh, but she... So... She's a little hard to see, so I'm going to do the technique where I hold it like this. So, it's in there. Okay. And then, like this. You'll notice bees have different personalities. Some of them will cling to the net. Some of them will fly around. Sometimes they're flying around enough that they just, like, zoom right into the water, which I... Oh. Uh, you're not even sure they got in the water. So this one's really... There we go can sometimes be hard to tell if you've got them there. Um, and there's a fly in there, which I have no need for, so I'm going to let them go. Okay, let's go over to some other flowers over here. You'll often... Oh, there's a Hylaeus. So this, I think that's a Hylaeus. Well, see, I'm not sure. It could be a Potter Wasp, it could be a Hylaeus. Since I can't tell, I'm going to catch it. So. I know it's on that flower right there. I'm going to, again, come right below and then flick quickly through the flower. Flip. There we go. Got him. I think it was getting out there. Yep. Cool. Still got it. So it's, I find smaller bees will less, they'll sometimes fly down. I think maybe they're just more willing to kind of fly in open space. Um, but the technique of holding it up still hanging there on the net. So I'm just going to hold hold the net up like this. Seems they could just fly out, but they're not really doing that just because that's the way they roll. So I just hold it up and then reach up. Often, if you kind of just get your jar between the net, there we go, flew right in. Just kind of get it close to them, they'll fly and fly right into the water. So that was that. You know, sometimes it can be hard to spot an individual bee, but you see a lot of bees there. So there can be cases if you see lots of little sweat bees and things that you can just kind of swing over the tops of the flowers like this. And there's times where I've caught like 20 sweat bees that way um, because it's not always that you spot an individual bee. You're like, there's bees in there. And you just kind of go for the region. That can work as well. Um, but yeah, I would say most of the time, the netting isn't like a big long swing it's a quick it's a little quick movement because you can get the net pretty close to them so you're kind of sneaking up from below and then just a whoosh. and then you see i do it then the other thing is i'm noticing that when you swing quick enough often you are breaking off the flowers which i guess is kind of unfortunate but you know the flowers will survive i guess so I guess that means that it's not like swinging a baseball bat where you're like going, you know, really getting your back and body into it. That's not it. It's more of a wrist. So I tend to kind of hold my net out at the end and then it's mostly a wrist movement. You're getting close and then just and then with that wrist movement, hopefully you'll get used to. You probably notice every time I move the net, I'm just by default doing that flip, whether I feel like I caught something or not. You should just do it every time, because if you did catch something, it won't get away. If you didn't, whatever, you didn't. Um, after I'm done with things, I'll often just turn it inside out and give it a flick to get rid of any other chunks and stuff. A um, couple other things to think about when netting is, actually, we've got a blackberry right here. 
So there's not flowers on this blackberry right now, but they are pretty popular. So depending on your net, um, you can kind of mess up your net if you're going to bash through blackberries, the thorns and stuff. This net's pretty rugged and I haven't had a problem with it, but you do want to be a little um, conscious of the plants so that you're not putting big holes in your net by bashing it through a bunch of thorns. Um, because yeah, as I said, normally I'm kind of hitting it through the vegetation a little bit, not just kind of out in open air. Um, I imagine some people might be thinking that the goal is just to like see the bee flying out and go like this. And yeah, if you, you might catch a bee occasionally that way, but most of the time I would say go for the flowers. And that means when you're out looking to catch bees, kind of wander around and look for flowers that are popular. I find that on any particular day, there'll be a certain species of flower that's most popular on that day. And it might be different the next day, but um, so find those flowers that have a lot of bees on them and then go for those. Uh, but given that the goal is to get as much diversity as possible, it's good to look for other species. Sometimes there'll be little flowers close to the ground, um, things like that, that are good to look for because they might have different spe species of bees. So let's say we did uh, 30 minutes of collecting there. I've got my batch of specimens. Now the most important thing to make sure we honor the lives of these insects is to label them properly. So I got my label. Um, I'm going to mark the time I started, the time I stopped. Going to check the net box and then going to put the county and the location. Um, you know, something you can find on a map, the lat long. Um, I've been using this app called Get GPS and it'll pull up the exact lat long to your location. When it comes to netting, I would just pick a lat long that's kind of like central to the area you're collecting. It's possible that you maybe went for a walk or covered some bigger area, but just kind of pick a central location for the latitude and longitude, year and day, um, and then your name, and you're all done. And that label will go uh, into your jar. Make sure to write your label with pencil or the uh, uh, archival ink micron pens. I think that is it. We have um, sacrificed through the mosquitoes enough, uh, so we're gonna go. Um, but thank you very much, and thank you for getting out and collecting bees. See you next time.